Hey guys, Craig Moeller along with Melissa Terrazas, my colleague here as meteorologist. We've been seeing yep. a lot of really interesting weather stories. Yeah. They're coming fast and furious now, Melissa. Yeah, Craig, so the climate is changing. It's nothing new to us. We've been tracking this for years now. So these are just some of the top three things that we've recently been monitoring. I mean, yeah. we've seen the global heat waves here across Hampton Roads and parts of the country, even across the world out in Europe, periods of drought and intense rain events. I mean, you're seeing it back home in St. Louis. Yeah, we're going to take a look at all of these things, give you an example of each one. And keep in mind, this is these are just recent examples of some of these things that are going on. We've been talking about this and uh, scientists have been studying this for years and your decades really as we take a look again we've got the heat advisory in place for parts of the southeast u.s right now south central u.s including parts of the lone yep, star back state home back around Dallas. melissa's hometown yep. uh, and then you can see across parts of oklahoma excessive heat warnings but then you look out west coast the pacific northwest they're dealing with record heat and excessive heat warnings and advisories from california into nevada up into oregon parts of idaho and washington state so this is something that is not just in one part of the country but we've got this excessive heat really literally from coast to coast. Now you take a look, there are other parts of the world that are seeing it. Let's head over to England and remind folks just last Tuesday, the 19th, London hit 104. Oh, Craig, that's unheard of. Yeah, yeah, warmest that they'd ever seen, ever recorded in the United Kingdom. So incredible heat there. And I was looking, you know, some folks were saying, hey, compared to 104 for London would be like Phoenix being at 128. Oh, my goodness. You know, you think about and these types of And they see hot temperatures out there. Yeah, they're used to, you know, hot weather. But you take a look at air temperatures getting up into that type of a, a level. It's just unheard of. Uh, as you take a look, obviously parts of Europe are recovering now. Other parts of Europe still feeling the heat. But this is something that we've seen more and more of these frequent heat waves. And again, the global temperature, the average temperature has it's been getting rising. warmer and warmer yeah. as well. So this is one of the effects. Now, something else we touched on, Melissa, the drought situation. Why don't you talk about the Lone Star State? All right. Well, so from Texas, you know, back home, Central Texas, small town of Temple, Texas, near the Austin area. My mom saying that it hasn't rained in days. You know, she's big on gardening and her plants and she's having to take care of the it's a little extra these days. We haven't seen any rain. We see the lake levels that are going down, Lake Belton, Lake Travis going uh, and, and just falling, continuing to fall. And we're not only seeing it in Texas. I mean, uh, at parts of, you know, out west, further along parts of ca Northern California, Las Vegas, Lake, lake Mead. Mead. Yeah, we were there talking about go. Lake Mead. Yes. Third, third body or, you know, human remains found uh, from the low water levels at Lake Mead. Yeah. Right now, the elevation of Lake Mead is down to 1,071 uh, for the surface of Lake Mead. That is the lowest on recorded history. And it's just one of those things where as the water levels get lower again, they've been so dry out there, they're starting to discover more things. They found a World War II era boat that was sunk in Lake Mead at one point. And that supplies so much water to that region. I was reading about that. So it's crazy to think about how these levels are drastically just going down due to these, these hot conditions that we're seeing causing the drought. And you can see again, drought conditions extreme to exceptional across California, much of Nevada, Utah really feeling it. And then as you mentioned, Texas parts of Kansas as Even well. Even causing wildfires. Yeah, there was that fire that uh, sparked around Dallas, yeah. took off and again, just because everything is so dry. Now we're gonna contrast that with the other thing we talked about. There have been more frequent flooding events as well where we do get rain. We're seeing exceptional amounts of rain, record setting in fact. That was the case in St. Louis. Take a look at this radar loop, and this goes all the way back 48 hours. You're going to see a period coming up as we get into Tuesday where the, the rain comes in, and then right here, just, just a stops. lot of intense yeah. rain. It doesn't stop for several hours. They had in St. Louis, they had 10 inches of rain in a 24 hour period. Most of that rain came in a handful of hours. Just west of St. Louis, uh, out in St. Charles County, 
they had up to 12 inches of rain. And Melissa, there were water rescues. There were parts of Interstate 70 were covered by floodwaters. Uh, this is a huge story. A state of emergency was declared in St. Louis County and areas and out ongoing. to the west. Yeah, just unbelievable. So uh, unfortunately, there was one fatality associated with the flooding where a car was completely submerged and the driver was still inside. Uh, there were also some animals lost That's right, from you mentioned that. Yeah, there's a rescue shelter uh, for animals and unfortunately some of the animals there were lost. Others were rescued, but it's just such a difficult situation. And previous to this flood episode with that intense rain across St. Louis and, and just west of St. Louis, the old record for a 24 hour rainfall was 6.85 inches. That came back in 1915, and that was remnants of a hurricane that made landfall around Galveston, Texas, and the remnants swept up. So that was the old one since 1915, over 100 years. They almost doubled that. Yeah. This one event. 12 yeah. inches of rain around St. Louis. So again, uh, the image is just heartbreaking out there in the Midwest. It's a serious situation, and it looks like we're going to be seeing more opportunities for these extreme events as we continue to go forward. Melissa, you know, city planners, civil engineers, they got to start thinking because some of the building codes, some of the roadways and infrastructure it's not up to date. They're not designed for what we're seeing right now. They're not. Yeah. So I think that's something that we definitely need to work on uh, just as a community, as a society, as we continue to see these events that again are all due to the Earth's changing climate. Something that we'll be watching and you'll be hearing a lot more of in the future.